Hello ladies and gentlemen, Adrian here for Digital Dojos, and today we're going to be taking a look and overview of Scrivener for iOS. And that being said, I want to take an opportunity to thank the folks over at Literature and Latte for making this video possible. Not just sponsoring this video, but a week's worth of content we have upcoming over at Digital Dojos. It is sponsors like them that make an independent network like Digital Dojos possible. So a huge shout out to the folks over at Literature and Latte. All right, for those of you really quickly who do not know what Scrivener is, this is like an ultimate writing tool. And it's really special for me to take a look at the iOS version that came out a little bit under a year ago just because it's been in the works for so long. I've been a huge fan of Scrivener on the desktop end. Uh, it's a writing studio app that allows you to write whatever you want to write in whatever format you want to write it, allowing you to edit, write, publish, and research all in one application. It's really great for longer form writing. I think that's what it's meant for more so, um, whether that's manuscripts, books. I've used it to write an ebook in the past. Um, I personally like it because when I write longer blog posts, I typically do multiple pages or um, even client work I do for like articles um, for other blogs and so on and so forth. That typically is much longer form writing and Scrivener allows me to break that down and allows me to jump around. And sometimes I don't like to write like in just chronological order. I like to jump around, re-edit, you know, revisit and touch up. Scrivener is perfect for that. So today we're going to be taking a look at the version for iOS. All right, so here we are taking a look at Scrivener, and this is the iPad version. I'll throw up some video of the iPhone one side by side, just so you can kind of see a general look at the interface. Basically, it's the same, just kind of scaled down. And, you know, I'm really happy to see the folks over at Literature and Latte, um, you know, taking the time to pour it over their desktop version of Scrivener in a way that makes sense, in a way that's intuitive, and takes advantage of that touch interface that is on the iOS devices. So here we have Scrivener, and when you first launch it, you'll be taken through a tutorial that you can easily check out, and they give you some really great tips here. See, um, you can, um, for example, I just reset the tutorial here, just so you can see it here. Um, they have some really great general tips that I'm going to go through here, but again, if you want to check all that out, feel free to. Additionally, they have a in-depth tutorial project that you can also take a look at here that gives you some great examples of how to do certain things, how each part of Scrivener kind of breaks down as far as like if you're outlining, doing research, um, you know, your drafts and how that works, um, so on and so forth. And we'll be going through all of this as well here in a second. So that being said, you can see I set up a really basic test project here that I wanted to first showcase just to give you an idea of the general interface if you're using Scrivener on iOS for the first time here. So on the left is your main uh, pane or navigation bar, essentially. You have the ability to jump between projects if you have multiple projects. You'll notice you have the ability to see projects that are local to your iPad or iPhone in this case, depending on what you're using. Um, and then Dropbox, which we'll talk about how that sync works in a second here. Now, we jump into the project that we're working with and we're presented with uh, right away the ability to go ahead and see all of the contents in the binder. Unlike Scrivener for the desktop, you don't get to choose like a preset template or whatever. You just create a new project and then start putting your content together and formatting it as you please. So your binder consists of three main sections. Your drafts, which is essentially all the content that you'll be writing and putting together, whether that's like chapters or you know text or what have you. Research, which is your ability to go ahead and gather information. So like, for example, when I was writing an ebook, I had a lot of different texts and different articles that I was sourcing and referencing. And it's really useful because rather than jumping between, like, let's say, a browser window and, and, and writing, I could just do everything in one application, and that made it real uh, intuitive and just productive overall. And last but not least, your trash. So as you delete things and stuff like that, the media will go to your trash, which is useful because sometimes you might delete something that you need to reference later, and then you can clear out the trash as needed. At the very top, you can see the recent things that you've worked on and or created, and then your bookmarks. We'll show you how to make that here in a second. So let's go ahead and create a new draft. So you can see I created a couple things earlier, but we'll just go ahead and make a new one here, and we'll call this one the second test document. So uh, I like to use these for like breaking up sometimes whether it's paragraphs or if you're doing like chapters of a book, you can, you know, do it that way. However you want to write, it's completely up to you. And that's a great thing about Scrivener. And once you get brought into the interface here, first off, you have a really great area um, to, of course, view your text and whatever you're working on here. You'll see uh, originally when you're in this view, the word count is on the bottom. You have the ability to add it to a bookmark on the bottom left, and then you can click that three lines to go ahead and see a preview of everything within this specific section. In this case, we're in the folder chapter one. Uh, in the bottom right, you have the ability to share out, and then you have your top nav bar, of course, to create more content. You can search for something within the specific page. You have the ability to see recent documents, and then your inspector, which will allow you to adjust the title. You can also add labels to make stuff easier to find and or organize. 
um, status, notes. You can you see here you have the ability to turn this into a folder if you want to make it a folder and adjust the icon depending on what you want here. This is really great because like, if you just want to have like little things to customize and so you know quickly what you're referencing here, you can go ahead and just use these little icons to customize certain things within your binder. Now, beyond that, let's go ahead and start writing some text. I actually have a series of text here that I want to paste in, so I'm going to go ahead and do that here. So here is some good old lorem ipsum text here uh, just to kind of show you what it looks like when it fills a page. And you'll notice I can just slide in from the left here if I want to bring back that main nav bar. They have a lot of those great kind of uh, swipe gestures on the uh, iOS app, which is really great. Additionally, let's say like you can't read all this text because there's a lot. You can pinch to zoom here, so you can you know zoom in, zoom out to kind of zoom in and, and you know read the text easier, whatever view works for you. Um, additionally, here when you tap on the text, you'll see the keyboard. I really, really like what they did with the keyboard. So you have your basic iOS keyboard. You can type, you can do some landscape portrait, depending on what you prefer. Um, but on top of that, you have a couple other options. So you have like the undo, the redo right there on the left. You have the ability to go ahead and like paste in. Um, I'm going to undo that right there. So copy, paste, etc. cetera. Um, your word recommendations. And then you have the ability to, of course, add things like comments. So these are really useful if you want to add like footnotes, inline footnotes or annotations. Um, more so, I, I feel like if you're writing a book or, or something where, for example, when I write with, um, when I collaborate with people for my clients and writing articles, sometimes I'll add footnotes and, you know, leave little comments in there asking me if they want this section taken out, revised, so on and so forth. Um, and that's just really easy to do here. You can see you can just add a comment with a time date stamp and say, like, is this fine? Or, you know, add whatever little notes that you want to add, depending if you're working, you know, with an editor or what have you. Um, and then they can see that that section has a uh, comment on it and I accidentally highlighted it here but um, yeah so that has a comment on it uh, you can see you do have the ability to highlight things here if you click on this little icon right here so I can highlight it yellow I can you know change the color there uh, and you know do as I please as I highlight the text now additionally you can also just change the overall color of the text you can also add um, footnotes like I mentioned as well very easily uh, and then on the left hand side you have the option to edit such notes or whatever material is on uh, your you know cursor you can add images into here of course so if you want to add an image it's really useful you can go ahead and just use this um, little button right here that looks like a link right there you can see add link or insert image you can do that right there um, so you just have a ton of different tools available if you swipe over you have the commonly used like punctuation tools so you don't have to actually switch the keyboard to get access to like commas or exclamation points I thought that was a nice touch especially since Scrivener is a very big writing tool for authors and then you have these basic navigation tools. Like if you don't want to actually like tap and, and navigate with your finger, you can actually just use these arrows right here. So you can see I can move the cursor. Whoops, if I decide to, there you go. I can move the cursor again, just tapping it. Um, and I can go left, right, up, down. I can jump to the last word here. So it makes it really easy to navigate. And you'll notice how I brought up that thing. If I tap and hold, you can actually customize the navigation interface. So if you want to swipe that for like something else, if you want that to be like forward delete or selection mode, even formatting options, you can completely customize the interface based on what you prefer. So if I wanted to have, instead of a question mark here, I wanted it to be like, you know, parentheses, I can change that to parentheses just by tapping and holding on the appropriate button. Really, really nice feature, nice touch by Scrivener. Right outside of that, on the top here, if I tap on text to edit here, you can see I have a little paintbrush in the top right there. This allows you to do all your style formatting options, so you can change like the text size, bold, italics, underline, strike through. Um, you have some more formatting options in there that you can adjust. And then, of course, you have your basic things like title, headings, so you can adjust all of those, bulleted list, number list. I think within this I have a my original test title you can see here like that's a title you know <laughs> yeah, exciting stuff but you know it, it it is nice that they have all those formatting options built into the editor and what i really like about scrivener's editor like at a glance it looks super simple and then you have all these options available to you as you want to change them which is a nice um i think way that they handle the interface because it doesn't get in the way you can do things like line indenting here so for example if i want to indent um this by a couple points i can do that uh, additionally, I can go ahead and go into spacing and adjust the line spacing. And that's probably more like relevant here where I can see more text here. So if I click on the text here, click on the paintbrush, you can see I can adjust line spacing as needed. And uh, 
that's something I was used to doing in high school <laughs> to make my documents longer. But um, again, you can see just really easy to browse through. At the very top, you have the word count there, which you'll notice. So that'll show you the overall word count. What's really great about this, if you tap on it, this is a feature I use a lot. You can set a tap target or word count target. Um, I use this personally because I used to do like 500 word blog post minimum, and I used to kind of do these daily. So you could just tap this and then you would set the word target that you want to hit. And you can actually set an alert if you overrun um, that said target. So really good thing if you just want to kind of, you know, be conscious of how many words you're putting into a certain section or what have you. Additionally, you can search for text in here. So if you want to do a search, you can go ahead and use that magnifying glass. And that's like the basic writing tools when it comes to, of course, just actually editing your content. Now, going back here, you can see you can choose to organize your content as you see fit. You can go ahead and, you know, add more text add you add folders to make this easier. You'll notice on the right of the folders, on the right of research, you'll notice this little four squares right there. That's actually the corkboard view. If you're familiar with Scrivener, you know how this works. Basically, it'll give you a visual representation of thumbnails across the application. It makes it really easy to see everything, really visually appealing. And trust me, when you have more stuff, kind of like, um, because this can get really crazy, your binder can get really packed. Um, the corkboard view makes it really, really simple to kind of see everything in a visual interface. Um, so you can always jump to that. Now within the tabs, you can just tap in here. You can see, you'll see the content of each section here. So for example, if I was to delete this second document here that I made earlier, I can go ahead and just choose to, I can even move it a couple ways. I can take it and then drag it out of the draft section and have it be its own independent thing. I can tap the circle there and then choose to move it to a specific section. So at the bottom, you see as soon as I tap that circle, I get these options available in the bottom left. I can move it to a different folder. I can just delete it like if I want to, like I said earlier, just to delete it and that would go to the trash as you can see there. Um, but again, you have a lot of different options here when it comes to moving and rearranging uh, your folders, documents, what have you. That's a great thing about Scrivener. It's really just up to you and however you want to move it around here and organize it. You have this ability as well to use those arrows again if you want to use that and not kind of tap and drag. But of course, tap and drag is always available there. And again, you can just make more folders as you see fit uh, and kind of make it your own and however you want to organize your project there. Again, your bookmarks will show up here at the top. If you ever bookmark a specific document and your recent pages here or recent interactions will all showcase here. And before well. moving on to syncing, I just want to talk about that bottom left portion of the UI here. You can see you have your settings, which we'll go into more in depth here in detail in a second. Uh, next to that, you have the compile option. So once you finish up your project, let's say you get everything added, you have everything the way you want it, you can compile the project within Scrivener here on the iPad. You can choose the file format. They support PDF, Word, RTF, and plain text on the iOS version. So those are your options. And then you can go ahead and choose like the appearance type. So you can have certain formats that you choose like manuscript, modern, um, a script. You know, these are your basic formats. So uh, you can choose that right there. And then you can go back here and decide whether or not you want to, you know, remove comments, show paper size or change the paper size options or page options overall. If this isn't going to be something that's printed like on physical media. Um, and then, of course, you can compile and send out the project. Outside of that, next to that button, you have the ability to import data into Scrivener on your iPad. So let's say you want to import an image. You can do that through your photo library. If you want to take an image, you can do that using the camera. You can grab information from a web page, iCloud Drive, and more. So if you have third-party applications like Amazon Drive or Dropbox on your iPad, you can pull from there as well. This is really useful when you're doing things like research. So if you have like a picture that you want to add, you can simply just use the camera and then you know take the picture and then add it to your overall binder. That simple that easy. Um, so that's how it would work with importing. And then next to that, you have the ability to add additional folders there and or of course, just add a new document overall. All right, now I wanna quickly talk about syncing because this is a big thing when it comes to working with Scrivener. I mainly am used to writing on Scrivener on the Mac. Uh, now that I have it on the iPad, it's a nice kind of way to on the go or if I don't wanna bring out my MacBook, um, just kind of quickly jot things down. I, I tend to do that a lot. Um, and sometimes if I have like a keyboard to set up with my iPad, then I can just kind of go all out and then have that sync later with my Mac. And this is how you go about doing that. So you can see that top right icon right there, the little circle next to the plus sign. Tap that and it's going to ask you to sync either with iTunes or Dropbox. So once you sign in with a Dropbox that you use on your Mac or PC 
and you also sign in with the um, same that same ID here on the iPad, you'll then so here in the Mac you can see I have my Dropbox folder. You can see it makes its own folder called Scrivener, and basically the way this works is everything gets synced into this Scrivener folder, and it interacts with each other by syncing it from your iPad to Dropbox, and then Dropbox would of course talk back to your desktop application as needed. So I have the ability now to go back to my projects tab here on the iPad, and you can see here if I hit edit, under the projects, I can see on my iPad locally I have this test project. If I simply drag that up, and drop it here into Dropbox, and I hit done, it now has that little blue icon, which means it needs to be synced or uploaded. So I click on that sync button again, and now it's going to start syncing my files with Dropbox. So after waiting a couple minutes, you can see Dropbox has successfully synced the project that I just made on the iPad as well as the project I had previously made on my desktop and saved over to my Dropbox folder. So you can see I can go ahead and actually open this test project right here on my Mac and if I have or if you have you know PC whatever you prefer and you can see I can easily now view that same document here on my Mac and the full you know desktop uh, application here. So. It's really great because if you want to work on the go or if you're like working on your laptop and you need to switch to your iPhone or iPad, you can easily just save and as long as that destination is set to your Dropbox folder or location, it easily goes ahead and will sync it over. And then you can see here on my iPad, I now have that test sync that I made here on my desktop. So I can go ahead and you can say sync changes on open this device. So I'll say yes. And just like that, I can view this other project that I had here as a test sample on my iPad now. So you can see this is an idea of what a script would look like, by the way. They have really great uh, templates that you can use. And I can go back here and just kind of show you the different aspects. You have like settings, characters. So these are, this is an idea of what another binder could look like depending on your given project. Now that all said, in the bottom left, keep in mind you have overall settings for the application and, and project in general. So you can see here you can adjust the compact view or expanded view on the sidebar. You can adjust settings or an options for the binders if you want to show labels or tint with label colors. I think in the most recent update, it actually even supports emojis for the binder icons. Um, the corkboard view, you can go ahead and adjust settings for that, as well as the editor options for doing, like if you're doing script writing, in this case, this test sync file that I'm using is a scripted file, so this allows for script writing and imported that. And my personal favorite, which was added in a recent update, dark mode. <laughs> I really like using my devices uh, later at night and you know to ha not have that harsh white light on uh, is really really helpful and I really just like the overall look of the dark mode here. All right all that said that was a look at Scrivener for iOS. They did a really great job porting over the fully featured desktop version into the mobile version whether it's the phone or iPad. I think they did a really great job of keeping the interface simple enough where it's not too crowded or you know um, too crazy and all over the place, yet you still have the ability to access all of those things that you need to access, whether it's creating the binder and the different sections, researches, or, you know, your research corkboard view. Um, you can go and, you know, add photos, and import photos from across different services. You can go ahead and, of course, you know, do all your text formatting and options. All the options that you're used to if you use Scrivener on the Mac are available, or you can PC for that matter, are available here for the most part, on the iPad and on the iPhone. I think they did a really great job making it mobily accessible. Um, the syncing options were great if you want to work between devices. Overall, it's just a really great writing tool. And again, if you are somebody who you know does more long-form writing and you're somebody who thinks that you know an overall writing tool, whether you're writing a book or a big project or essay, would be useful to you, do check out the iOS version. You may be, you know, um, you may be. Uh, able just to run purely off of that on the iPad or iPhone. However, again, you can definitely check out the desktop counterparts, which are also fully featured. So hope you enjoyed this video. Again, a huge thanks to the folks over at Literature and Latte for making this possible. And as always, like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Leave your feedback down below. And of course, thanks for watching.